Hello and welcome to the FMCG in crowd. I'm Daniel Hunt, Commercial Consultant for Price and Promotions at IRI. In my 21 year career, I've worked for a number of large manufacturing businesses in roles spanning finance, trade marketing, sales, and most recently strategy planning and revenue management. Now at IRI, my role is engaged with suppliers and offer solutions to their revenue management challenges. In this series of podcasts, we're going to explore the topic of value. To help me probe into this hugely important topic, a few weeks ago, I invited three guests to join me who are all experts on the subject of FMCG revenue management. Rachel Young, European Net Revenue Director for Nomad Foods. Kevin Nolan, Commercial Strategy and Revenue Management Controller for UK Ireland at Bayer Consumer Health. And Phil Morgan, Commercial Planning and Execution Director at Premier Foods. A big thanks to all of them for taking part in the conversation and sharing their thoughts with us. In the first episode, we're kicking off by talking about value perception. The context for this uh, and what's interesting about the market at the moment is we're officially in recession with two quarters of GDP decline across the UK. However, we've seen a massive growth of £7.2 billion across the total FMCG market. Obviously, a large proportion of this is driven by a move from take home to at home consumption. Nevertheless, there there are many brands and categories that are doing pretty well at the moment. Whereas typically in a recession, we'd expect to see shoppers behaving very differently by switching to own label, moving to the discounters and seeking out promotions. And whilst we know that shoppers will be looking to manage their spend as recession bites, we're not necessarily seeing those expected behaviours at the moment. When I caught up with the group, I asked them, how they think shoppers define value. Hello, my name is Rachel Young and I'm the Group Net Revenue Director at Nomad Foods. Value is really, for me, very, very contextual. So we really have to think about, and I think about it in the sense of value being a bit like beauty. You know, for me, value is in the eye of the beholder. Mm. And and what you would pay for something varies depending on what context you're in. So, Mm. you know, on a nice summer summer's afternoon, how much would you pay to get home from a, a trip away versus, you know, 10 o'clock at night on a winter's evening? The value you put on, on something is very, very different. So that for me is, you know, it's, you know how much would you be willing to part with mm. in within a given context? And, and the context is the most important bit there. I mean, we think about value right the way from the start to the end of the shopper journey. So we think about we have a flywheel that that operates and if everything is in line, then the flywheel spins faster and the shoppers will perceive our brands differently. So we think about how we communicate, whether it's on TV, through digital, what our packaging looks like, what it feels like, what attributes we're sharing with the shoppers. It's really about putting the shoppers at the heart and thinking about what context they're in and then thinking about how to communicate what they really value and then position yourself accordingly. Okay, great. That, that makes sense. And do you do you think that um, value perception has been affected uh, this year? You know, is there, are there certain things that people are valuing more or valuing less um, when they're making the purchase decisions? I think this is a really interesting question because typically in a recession, you would imagine that all of a sudden price becomes, you know, point number one for people. But back to the point on context, you know, the sense of urgency, the sense of self-protection, you know, in some cases, these drivers surpass a focus on direct price. But equally, with so many people in a situation on furlough and people losing income, it's kind of a juxtaposition in which, you know, people place value on different things. So the same consumer can can experience both pulls, you know, a sense of urgency, the need to have self-protection, but also to protect their income. So we know that in a recession, consumers will be focused on price mm-hmm. and therefore the value equation, but it's not a normal recession. The, mm. the value equation is a lot more complex now. So we yeah. have to think even more carefully about what people place a value on without forgetting the table stakes of things, you know, in food like taste, health, 
and yeah. more frequently sustainability. Not everything is different now. I'm Kevin Nolan. I'm the Net Revenue Management and Commercial Strategy Controller at Bayer. I've been in revenue management for about 14 years now and very passionate around sustainably growing revenue. Value is your benefit to something minus the cost of it. Mm -hmm. which sounds intuitively like really, really simple, but ultimately it is. How do I improve my value offer? With two routes, right? I improve the benefits I'm offering someone so they see more in it, they see more use in it, they see more utility if we want to talk economics in it, but more benefits from it when they get a better return from it. Or I take my costs down instantly. You know, that's how I balance my equation. We're in recessionary times. We're talking a lot around price and costs already for people. So undoubtedly, there's a massive, massive in impact. As you say, incomes are being squeezed. People don't know what the future looks like. I mean, we're in, well, if we saw the economic drop of 20%, like 10 times what previously in our lifetime was the biggest impact of the credit crunch of 2008-9. However, within that, for me, I still think there's value in what we have to offer our shoppers and our consumers. We still can give them the best products that can deliver enhanced benefits and enhanced functionality. And I firmly believe there will be people still wanting to pay for it. In this year, I think ultimately it, it's not just a 2020 for me. I've been in consumer goods now um, 15, 18 years of my career. It's been coming through time. We've heard it through through the growth of the discounters, through the big retailers in the UK, through online. We've constantly heard talk around value. And even now we're talking about value, but value is becoming price. You know, these two things for me have been, com been conflicting, really. You know, value is what we get from something. Price is that proxy of it. So we talk more about price over the last 10, 15 years of my career. So this thing of we are the best value, people just want to sell the cheapest price. They are slightly different things. And again, that's what I'm really passionate around. They are different things. We can't let them be the same. And I think by making them the same, consumers hear a message and shoppers hear a message. They hear a value meaning price and they just look for that price all of the time. And I tell them I'm the cheapest or I have the best price. I remember earlier in my career seeing a retailer listing a product with price match to another big retailer. Not indicating that their price had gone up 25 pence for that unit, but using the other retailer as their barometer of this value or this price guarantee. So yeah, I think it's um, for me, it's. It's been changing. Price is becoming bigger because we're framing our consumers and our shoppers that way massively. But definitely a retailer is taking advantage of it in places. Yeah, I firmly believe they are. And so it's a really good segue then from what you've been saying to how how can retailers and manufacturers, suppliers um, to the retailers, um, you know, what do they need to do uh, going forward to 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 either rebalance or, or kind of um, to, to kind of drive that value perception? It's real deep consumer insight, consumer understanding. What is important in the purchase? What can stimulate a purchase at a higher price point? What can command more value for me? If I'm just going out launching Me Too products and look, I work in healthcare and you see that a lot, people can very easily read active ingredients, but how do I make my brand worth paying more for? And if we have that benefit, if we have that value driver, it, it, it's pretty simple, right? But we have to communicate really clearly to the shopper and the consumer. They have to be able to see it and they have to feel they're getting a benefit from it. Again, I remember a point earlier in my career, I was told about a value driver that we had in a pack, but the pack was closed. It was all cardboard. You couldn't see into it. So therefore the value driver couldn't be seen. So it's like, well, if it can't be seen and I can't understand what it is, how can I possibly expect to charge more for it? It feels pretty basic, but then fundamentally it is. It's got to sit there. I demonstrate that there's more value. I show and you can see more value in it, and then I can take a higher price for it. You know, surely that's my goal, right? Mm -hmm. Understand what consumers want, what shoppers want, right? And give it to them, and make it really visible. And that is what will set me apart. My name's Phil Morgan. I work for Premier Foods. I've been with the business for eight years. And my job title is Commercial Planning and Execution Director. Uh, yeah, value is a pretty ambiguous word, isn't it? Um, I think uh, when you, you talk about value to customers, the immediate assumption is its price. I think the way that I think about value and why I try and talk about value is it's a combination of a number of things, price being one of them. Yeah, sure, absolutely. 
Um, but if we forget about the the other elements that create value, then I think it's pretty one that is too one dimensional. Mm. I mean, I think you know when we talk about it, um, at primitive foods, we talk about um, things like you know the the taste proposition, you know, of our some of our products versus our competitors, um, mm. the functionality of the packaging, and how that creates value to the shopper. Uh, whether it's re reusable, recyclable, you know, those kind of different things go coming different pack sizes for different shop emissions and occasions. Um, even things like, you know, the, the convenience element. So if we're investing in in product quality that then creates a convenience benefit. So you, I don't know, for example, you put a product in the microwave for two minutes rather than having to um, you know, cook it for 20. You know, that that's a value creation for the shopper. So I, I think it's important to remember the, the the different elements of the create value overall. Um, and even more recently, things which are focused on like meat free and vegan and things offering value to those people with different different needs, I think is, a, is an important part of that definition of, of value. But I think all of those elements have to equate to a um you know a perception of a you know the value of the proposition versus the price mm -hmm. so you, you they have to be within the same kind of um overall uh yeah, mindset so you've got to have a number of functional benefits and value um creation which exceeds the price mm -hmm. that is available for something similar across in the competitive set now whether that's a competitor of ours or whether it's somebody creating a pasta sauce off their own back. You know, mm. So the, the price is an important part of the equation, but it's important to remember all those other elements I just talked about. That's, I suppose, how I would think about shopper value. In the context of reducing promotional participation, the drive towards EDLP and all of the commercial pressures, I think it's important not to forget that shoppers do want a small level of excitement when they're and to be engaged mm -hmm. and i do think that innovation whether it's new products to the market which offer different value um uh, whether it's that that's not dis discarded in the fate in the thirst for kind of deep removing duplication and cutting down ranges and simplicity i think that shoppers do still want to um be excited and be offered new things and also if it's not new products it's com you know, it's commercial innovation whether it's events or you know bringing a little bit more interest to shoppers and i think we mustn't forget about that to bring value to the to the equation as well whether it's you know, don't, don't get too drawn into simplification and things like that at the, the cost of um creating a little bit of excitement which drives value in the in a slightly different way so i think that's a something which we, we, we really need to hold on to as a, as a broader organisation or industry. So there's the end of episode one. And I really enjoyed that. I thought it was really nice kind of thought provoking conversation, uh, particularly the bit about the, the fact that value has been hijacked by low price. But as retailers and manufacturers, we need to get hold of value again and remember what it truly is. Kev summed it up nicely. Value is benefits minus costs. And both of those are plural. Because within benefits, you've got functional, practical benefits. You've also got quality benefits. And you've got emotional benefits of brands as well. Within costs, it's not just about price. But price is the biggest and easiest lever to pull. There's also things like time. If I spend time going to get a product, then that's a, an investment from me. Rachel put it well in terms of how value is contextual and i really love the thought of flagging a taxi to get out of the pouring rain versus strolling home on a nice summer's day particularly at the moment um, but when she talks about her flywheel i think that's a great way to think about it as well there's lots of things that drive value perception and you've got to make sure that one of those doesn't trip you up and as she put it everything keeps spinning now to get there, you need a deep consumer understanding. What really are their needs, their missions, their occasions? And once you know that, that's when you start to 
be able to play them back to them and really help them understand the value that your product truly delivers. Advertising is the first point to demonstrate those benefits, then calling out attributes on pack. But as Kev said, you've got to make sure you know which attributes really drive that purchase preference and make sure they're most prominent. Altogether, value is more than the sum of its parts. And if you understand it through price elasticities, consumer research, or attribute modeling, this will allow you to hit the right cues with your consumers, allowing you to enhance and protect the value that's inherent in your products.